Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. In today's video, which is sponsored by Policy Genius, more on that later, uh, we're actually gonna be discussing whether you should build or buy a home and some of the pros and cons that come with doing both of those things. So with real estate prices at all time highs at the time of this recording, and with interest rates that are extremely low right now, people are actually starting to consider building versus buying used or buying an existing home. So in this video, as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons of building a home, and I'll touch on the existing home portion as well. Let's get into it. Okay, so the way I'm going to present this is with the pros and cons of building a home, and I'm going to interject the pros and cons of buying an existing home. So this will make more sense once I start, so let's get into it. Number one is you get exactly what you want when you are building a home. That is obviously the reason why you're building a custom built home, so you can get exactly what you want. So you're in complete control when you build a home. You can work with an architect, a general contractor, you can be the general contractor, uh, you can work with a builder, but basically you have control over the floor plan, the finishes, the layout, the colors, the landscaping, pretty much everything. It's a blank canvas in most situations, unless you are in a cookie cutter development, which I'll talk about later in the video. Now, to counteract that point with an existing home, you can still finish an existing home the way you want, however, you lose a majority of the control when you're talking about layout and floor plan. So with the layout and floor plan, sometimes you have load-bearing walls that you can't demo, sometimes you have certain structural issues that you can't change, uh, so that's definitely a pro in favor of building a home. Now, the second point that most of you may not think about is that there are no bidding wars when it comes to building a home. So in my market right now, houses are getting bid up thousands of dollars over asking price just because there's such low supply and so much demand in the market. With a new home, there is no competition unless you're literally you know, trying to compete and buy a certain lot or buy the land. That's typically when you have competition with newer homes. However, when it comes to building the home, say you already own the lot, there's no headache and no bidding wars when it comes to that. Number three, there are no headaches with building a new home. And for anybody that's built a new home, you're probably like hitting the dislike button. You're probably saying, Marco, you're an idiot. What are you talking about? That's why I have a huge asterisk right there. So let me get into this right after the Policy Genius spot. Hey everybody, so check this out. Policy Genius is America's leading online insurance marketplace. Since 2014, they've helped over 100,000 families get insurance right and have placed $45 billion in coverage by combining cutting edge technology with expert human help. So check this out. We have life insurance, homeowners insurance, renters, auto, uh, in case something happens to FIDO, we got pet insurance, disability, you name it, they have it. So what Policy Genius does is they compare the top life insurance companies to find you the right coverage at the best possible price. With Policy Genius, you can save up to 40% just by comparing quotes. So they are the second largest term life insurance broker in the United States. Policy Genius helps you shop over 40 insurers to find your best fit. So if you remember my video uh, between whole life and term life, this is a huge benefit. And because Policy Genius is an independent broker, they fight for the customer, not the insurance company. So you can see here, I'm basically going through a per personalized quote and it couldn't be any simpler you guys uh, I'm going to go through this process very quickly uh, I'm not going to show you my birth date because I'm getting older uh, but you know if you want to check this out all you have to do is visit policygenius.com slash whiteboard finance to shop the market and start saving today so new homes have little to no maintenance because literally everything is new with existing homes you have to worry about the roof the mechanicals the finishes the windows the lighting all that stuff may be decades old depending on what part of the country you're buying in and how old the original house was built. Um, so if the original owners didn't do any of that stuff, guess who has to foot that bill? It's either going to be you or hopefully your insurance company, but that's, that's a topic for another video. So no headaches with the new home. And yes, trust me, I'm going to get to this asterisk on, on the flip side of the video. So number four, newer homes or new homes are obviously more efficient. Uh, they're typically more energy efficient because they're using better technology. They have newer windows, they have improved technology with the mechanicals, and they're also using energy efficient materials. So if you're somewhere that has four seasons, this is very important because it'll get you need your house to stay hot in the winter and you need it to be cool in the summer and all of these newer homes have energy efficient technology that lets them do that. Uh, number five is that this is common sense with a new home is that you are the only owner. So think of this as a one owner vehicle or a one owner car. 
You're the first and only owner of the house so far, meaning that with existing homes, you have to, the previous owner may have had pets, they may have had uh, mold, they may have been dirty people in general, they may have been hoarders, you don't know. Um, the worst thing is, they may have been smokers actually, where the walls are literally yellow, um, but hopefully that gets remediated before the sale. So my point is, is that you know that everything in this house is fresh, it's new. If you're a clean person, you can maintain it for years or decades without the house ever having any of those issues from an existing owner. Okay, so let's talk about some of the cons of building a home and I'm going to interject some points of existing homes in that as well. So number one is stress. Building a home is incredibly stressful, especially if you aren't on the same page as your spouse or significant other. So I continued the asterisks from the pros because I didn't mean to make it say that building a new house has no headaches whatsoever. I meant once you're moved in and settled in and everything is working how it should, then there's typically no headaches because everything is new. However, the process of building a home is extremely stressful. So you have to buy the land, you have to get the financing if you're not paying cash. You have to deal with the general contractor or the project manager or the subcontractors if you are the general contractor or the builder. Um, sometimes I know couples that have gone through this process that have gotten a divorce during the home building process because it is so stressful. So what I would recommend doing is getting a dedicated project manager, especially if you're working with one of the national builders like Adris or Ryan Homes or whoever. Um, they will help you get the, through this process and alleviate some of this stress. Um, the thing with existing homes is that you know exactly what you're getting, so it alleviates some of that stress. Yes, you can still disagree with your partner on fit and finish and colors and things like that. However, when it comes to uh, floor plan and layout and all that you know, big stuff and managing subcontractors, an existing home doesn't have any of those headaches. Okay, so number two, you have to wait to move in. So depending on your builder and the type of home that's being built, um, you have these national builders that build these cookie cutter homes that go up in 90 days. Um, then you have custom built homes that could take anywhere from you know, a year to two years depending on the size and scope of the project. Um, it typically takes 90 days to about two years to build a custom built home. So what are you gonna do that whole time? Uh, typically, you have to either rent a space, whether it's an apartment or an existing single family home. I actually had a tenant in one of my properties. He was a Domino's franchisee owner. This guy made like 20, 30 grand a month. He owned a bunch of these Domino's and he actually rented from me and he was the best tenant ever. However, he did leave about a year and a half later. So existing homes, you don't have to do this because it already exists. So you don't have to wait to move in. You pick a closing date, you get the keys, you change the locks, boom, you're moved into your new home. So move and wait is a big issue with new homes. Number three is that there's little negotiation, little to no negotiation. So you know me, I'm old school, I like to haggle on everything. With existing homes, you can haggle on the stuff that's inside the house, you can haggle on the price of the house, you can say, hey, your roof is old, knock off you know, 15 grand off the price of the house, you know, otherwise get it fixed, that kind of a thing. With new homes, there is little to no negotiation. So other than materials, you know, say you're buying in bulk, for example, uh, it's hard to get, negotiate the price on building a home, especially with a national builder, because typically they know their margins and their prices are set. Okay, so with an existing home, you have a lot more negotiation room. Number four, we're gonna talk about hidden costs. So new homes are advertised as starting at, however, you don't really start racking up the bills until you start adding what you really want. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, fit and finish and things like that play a big role in what the price per square foot is ultimately gonna be for the cost of the house. So there's a big difference between you know, custom cabinets and granite countertops than you know, something that comes from like rooms to go or something and you get it done for super, super cheap. So uh, if you have laminate countertops and you know, not custom cabinets, of course there's gonna be a big difference there. So with existing homes, you don't typically have hidden costs unless you're talking about closing costs and things like that that you just simply weren't aware of. But when it comes to you know, fitting or outfitting an existing home, the hidden costs aren't there. And then finally, we have construction and landscaping. So this is my beautiful drawing of an evergreen tree. That's, that means landscaping in my hieroglyphics, but that's why you watch this channel for my art abilities, right? So you typically, um, if you're moving into a development, for example, and you're one of the earlier purchasers, Obviously, your house is going to be built before everyone else's, so you're, dirt, you're dealing with noise, dirt, mud, you know, debris, potentially nails in the road, things like that. Also, no one's going to have landscaping for a year, year and a half to two years. The other thing with that that no one really thinks about, not only does your landscaping look like crap, 
every, nothing is mature, okay? So existing homes, they may potentially be in a mature development. So they're gonna have beautiful, you know, tall trees, evergreens, things like that, depending on where you live. With the cookie cutter developments where they just buy a big tract of land and just flatten everything, um, you know, that's not a mature development. It's just gonna be literally a cookie cutter development. So obviously you can buy a, buy a plot of land and build a new home somewhere super nice, but I'm just talking about for a majority of the people watching this video. Okay, so finally I finished every video I make with my thoughts at the end, uh, and that's why you should stay until the end. Not because you wanna hear my thoughts or because I'm a genius, because I'm not, I'm just a regular person on YouTube. Uh, it's because this is where you can apply logic to what I just presented, and you're also helping the YouTube algorithm. Just let, let all my videos play. Let them go to the end and smash the like button. Just click the like button, don't smash it, don't annihilate it, uh, I digress. So anyway, my thoughts on this are, what can you afford, okay? So I know most of you came to this video uh, wondering what my opinion is on whether you should build or buy or what the numbers work out to be. That's impossible to answer. Uh, real estate is hyper local, it all depends on where you live. You can literally be on a different side of the train tracks and it changes the numbers completely. So I cannot possibly create a video encompassing uh, the entire country or the entire world uh, to be exact because I have viewers all over the world. So first and foremost, what can you afford? It doesn't matter if you want a brand new house if you can't afford it. If you cannot afford to build a new home, then you have to settle with an existing home and then you have to settle with an existing home that you can actually afford, okay? Number two is that it's just a house. Yes, your house is your sanctuary, it's where you relax, it's where you raise a family, it's where you're part of a community, it's where you, know, you go to unplug, I get all that, trust me. However, once you get bombarded with all these videos on Instagram and YouTube and uh, HGTV and oh, you know, I'm a teacher, I'm a butterfly collector and I'm looking at houses in the neighborhood of $700,000, you know, it's like, what? You know, like, are you even a real person? Uh, so what my point to all this ramble is, is that that allure goes away over time, okay? So yes, when you're moving into a house, you wanna outfit it, you wanna finish it, you wanna do all your you know, furniture, you wanna make it your home, I get that. But trust me, that goes away and guess what? It just turns into a money pit over time. It's a liability. Uh, yes, on your balance sheet, a house is an asset, of course, but at the end of the day, it truly is a liability because you'll always have property taxes, you'll always have maintenance, you'll always have upkeep and, and stuff breaks, okay? So remember these two things and you should be A-OK. -okay. Um, as always, if you got value out of this video, please share it with one friend. Uh, smash and annihilate and destroy the like button. That seems to work, I guess. Or you can just click on it and then subscribe and hit the bell notifications and share this video on social media. Thank you so much and have a prosperous day. Yeah, maybe it's just the house to you when you live in an 800 square feet. I'm in 3,600 square feet, baby. I'm stunting on him with that YouTube money. You know what I'm saying, son? You know what I'm saying? Just a house to you, son. This is what we do on Whiteboard Finance. Let's go.